This tutorial is on absolute value functions and more specifically we're going to look at a few different methods for graphing them. Now to start off we're going to look at an example of how to graph an absolute value function using a table. So here with example 1 they want us to graph y equals the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 1 by first using a table. Now if we want to graph this using a table, we need to first find a few points. So we need to make a table of values. So let's start by just trying a few different x values. So let's do 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So now that we have some values that we want to evaluate in our table, let's actually do that. So let's first start with our x value of 0. So we have y equals the absolute value of x, where x is 0, minus 2, plus 1. Well, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2, and then plus 1. So y is going to equal 2 plus 1, or 3 when x is 0. Now let's try it when x is 1. So again, we'll have y equals our absolute value of x, where x is 1, minus 2, and then plus 1. Now 1 minus 2 is a negative 1, and the absolute value of negative 1 it's just a positive 1. And then we still need to add the 1. So when x is 1, we're going to have a y value of 1 plus 1. Or in other words, 2. So let's speed this up a little bit. So our x value now is 2. When we plug that in, we get 2 minus 2, which is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0 which leaves us with 0 plus 1, which gives us a y value of 1. And then same thing again when we plug 3 in for x. 3 minus 2 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. And then plus another 1, we get 2. And then now with our last one, if we plug 4 in for x, we have 4 minus 2, which is 2. And the absolute value of 2 is 2. And that leaves us with 2 plus 1 for our y value, which is 3. So now that we have a table of values, let's plot them onto a graph. So our first point we have is 0, 3. So we'll go 0 along the x and then positive 3 on the y. Then our next point is 1, 2. So we'll go over 1, and then up 2. And then 2, 1. So we'll go 2 in the x direction, and then 1 in the positive y direction. And then 3, 2. So we'll go 3, and then up 2. And then our last point is 4, 3. So we'll go 4 for the x value, 3 for the y value. So now that we've made those points, we kind of have an idea of what this absolute value function will look like. So let's connect the dots now. So that's what our absolute value function would look like when we graph it. So when you graph an absolute value function using a table, you just need to find a few points that you could use to see the overall behavior of the function. And then from there, you can just draw the rest. Now let's take a look at another example of graphing absolute value functions. So here, with example 2, they want us to make y equals the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 1 into two linear equations. Now the idea behind this is if we make two linear equations for the absolute value, we could just graph those two linear equations. And those linear equations can be combined to make the graph of the absolute value function. Now let's first start off by finding these two linear equations. 
Now if we're going to make this into two linear equations, the best way to do that is to first isolate the absolute value. So if we have y equals the absolute value of x minus 2 and then plus 1, if we want to isolate the absolute value, we need to get rid of this plus 1 here. So to do that, we just need to subtract 1 to both sides. And that will leave us with a y minus 1 equals the absolute value of x minus 2. Now if you remember with absolute value functions, they measure the distance that a certain point is from an origin. Now that point can either be on the positive side of a number line or on the negative side of the number line. So we need to account for both cases. So first of all, we have y minus 1 equals the positive end which will just leave this with x minus 2 or we have the negative end where y minus 1 equals a negative x minus 2. Now let's start with the positive side. So we have y minus 1 equals x minus 2. Well in order to make a linear equation out of this we just need to isolate the y. So we need to get rid of this negative one by adding one to both sides. So when we do that, the ones cancel out on the left side. And we're left with y equals x minus 2 plus 1, which simplifies to be an x minus 1. And we also need to specify that this particular equation is for the positive side for the absolute value function. So in order to do that, we take our absolute value expression, which was x minus 2, and we say that has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now if you want to, you could simplify this by isolating the x. So if we add 2 to both sides, to cancel out the 2 on the left side, we're left with an x is greater than or equal to a positive 2. So this particular equation right here is only going to be used when x is greater than or equal to 2. Now let's take a look at the second equation. So we have y minus 1 equals a negative 1 times the quantity x minus 2. So to start off, let's distribute this negative so we don't have the parentheses anymore. So a negative 1 times x gives us a negative x and then negative 1 times a negative 2 gives us a positive 2 because negative times negative is a positive. So now let's further simplify this and isolate our y. So we want to give her this negative 1 by adding 1 to both sides. So when we do that we're left with y by itself equaling a negative x plus 2 plus 1 which simplifies to be a plus 3. So our equation for the negative side of the absolute value function is going to be y equals negative x plus 3. But again we need to specify that this is that negative direction. So we have our absolute value expression which is x minus 2 and rather than being greater than or equal to 0 it's going to be less than 0. Now if we want to isolate it for x, we just need to add 2 to both sides. So that leaves it with x being less than 2. So the second equation will be used when x is less than 2. So now that we've found our two linear equations, let's put them together. So here with example 3, we want to use the equations that we found and graph them to make the absolute value function. So first, let's start with uh, the negative side. So we have negative x plus 3. So we'll start at a positive 3. And then we have a slope of negative 1. So we're going to go down 1 over 1. 
down one over one. Now if you remember, we're only going to be using this when x is less than 2. So we're not going to go any farther than 2 with this particular equation. So when we graph it, it'll look like this. Notice that it stops right before 2. Because we're only using this equation for when x is less than 2. So that will cover this whole interval here. Now let's do our other equation. So now we have y equals x minus 1. So we'll start at negative 1. And then we have a slope of positive 1. So we'll go up 1 over 1. So we're about right here. And then up 1 over 1 up one over one and we just keep going like that so now we could draw our other line and keep in mind that it's only for when x is greater than or equal to two so when we graph it it'll start at two and it'll just keep going in the positive direction now as you can see we use two linear equations with certain restricted domains to make a graph of an absolute value function. Now let's take a look at how we would make a graph of an absolute value function that would represent a real world situation. So here in example four, you leave your house to go to work. After driving for three minutes, you pass by your friend's house and continue driving towards your workplace. If your friend lives two miles away from you, Sketch a graph that would show your distance from your friend's house after t minutes of driving. So to start off, it tells us that you are two miles away from your friend. Since your friend lives two miles away from your house, so to start off, you will be two miles away from your friend's house. Now, after three minutes of driving, you'll pass by your friend's house, which essentially means that you'll be zero miles away from your friend. So after three minutes, you'll be at a distance of zero miles from your friend's house. So if we graph that portion, we'll have something like this. Now assuming that you continue to drive at that same rate, you're going to pass by your friend's house and get continually farther and farther away from it. If we go another three minutes for driving, you'll be another two miles away from your friend. So if we continue to graph our absolute function with that in mind, it'll look something like this. So that's how you would graph an absolute value function with this particular real world situation. So you start off two miles away from your friend's house, and then as you drive to work, you get closer and closer to your friend's house till you actually reach it and then pass it and continue to drive further and further away from it as you get closer to your workplace. And that would be an example of a real life situation where the graph of your distance would make an absolute value function.